I'm Taruna Agnani, and it is my pleasure to welcome you all to FFE's virtual open house for the year 21-22. When we started the virtual meets last year, little did we know that this platform will become a new normal. The past one year has tested the entire human race in various degrees, from throwing unforeseen and unimaginable challenges in front of us to unpending our lives and causing irreparable damage. And yet, this universal tragedy could not shake the highest form of human spirit, that of optimism. While we have learned several lessons from this crisis, one of the most important one is that we make a living by what we give, but we make a life by what we give. On that note, I would like to begin today's event by welcoming our esteemed donors, guests, students, facilitators, alumni, and mentors to FFE's seventh virtual open house event for the state of Orissa and West Bengal. I would now like to invite FFE's managing trustee, Dr. Sudha Kidao, to address the gathering. Dr. Sudha has been volunteering for FFE for more than a decade, first in the US and from 2010 in India, beginning with the establishment of FFE's office in Bangalore. Please join me in welcoming Dr. Sudha Kidao. Thank you, Taruna, and good evening, everyone. It is my absolute honor, my privilege, and my pleasure to welcome all of you this evening to FFE's virtual open house for all of you participants from Odisha and West Bengal. It is a, indeed a very special evening as we see the number of participants increase steadily to over 550 now. And I know that number will just increase. So thank you for making uh, your participation in this event a priority. We really value that. Uh, we have a lot to cover this evening, uh, but uh, before I begin, I'd like to welcome our chief guest and keynote speaker, Dr. P.K. Banerjee, who is the president and CTO of Hindalco Industries Limited. Thank you for being with us this evening. I'd also like to welcome all of you students, our alumni, our volunteer facilitators, whom we truly value, our donors, and our guests. Thank you for being here. Uh, as Taruna mentioned, we all have been through a terrible time uh, because of the pandemic. And that has meant that all of us have been affected in one way or the other. The entire FFE fraternity has also been affected because we lost a few students to the terrible pandemic. Uh, we have students who've lost parents um, to COVID. And unfortunately, we've lost three of our very valued volunteers to this uh, pandemic as well. We mourn each loss. And we know that is, uh, it is a terrible time for their families and for us. But we are thankful that they were part of our family. And we feel truly blessed that they were part of our lives. Thank you. I'd like to go on by starting with a presentation to tell you about the Foundation for Excellence uh, and where we are and where we are going. So um, the Foundation for Excellence, is, as all of you know, is a nonprofit. Uh, we've been in existence for 27 years, and we're one, um, one of the largest nonprofits in the higher education space in India today. Next slide, please. And what is the mission of the foundation? Uh, it is very simple. It is to help very smart students like all of you uh, access uh, financial assistance so that you can go on to pursue your dreams of higher education. And we hope that through the scholarship program, we are able to bring about a transformation in your lives and, and the lives of your families and your communities. Next slide, please. Um, so the flagship program of the Foundation for Excellence is the scholarship program. I want to congratulate all of you students who have been awarded the scholarship. Uh, some of you for two, three, four, and some of you for the fifth year, which you will be getting very soon. Congratulations. This is a scholarship program that is competitive, so it's not easy to win this scholarship. One of the important things, uh, as you all know, it's a merit and means scholarship, which means all of you have done very well, have got uh, good ranks and have got into the best colleges in the country. One important aspect of our work is we like to stay connected with all of you while you're student 
And also after you graduate, go on and become alumni and are uh, successful in your careers and whatever your dreams are and wherever you go, we want you to continue to be connected to the FFE family. Next slide, please. Uh, a brief history of the organization. Uh, the organization was founded by a very successful Indian entrepreneur, Dr. Prabhu Goel, uh, who, who is uh, a graduate of uh, IIT Kanpur. You will hear a lot more about him and you will hear from him very soon. Uh, Dr. Prabhu Goel and his wife, Mrs. Poonam Goel, started the Foundation for Excellence in the US in 1994. And their wish was always to help st smart students in India pursue higher education. Um, and over time, a lot of students in India began to get scholarships from the Foundation for Excellence. Students in India graduated, got jobs, and were ready to give back to the Foundation. And since there was no way of doing that, uh, the Foundation for Excellence India Trust began. It was established uh, in Bangalore in 2003. And the very first donations to FFE India Trust came from our very own alumni. And very soon you'll hear why alumni are a very important part of our work. Uh, over, the, over time, over the years, FFE uh, has expanded, has grown. Our reach has now in 27 states in India. And uh, we have awarded scholarships to over 25,000 students over the span of the last 27 years. Next slide, please. Uh, the uh, trust, FFE India Trust, uh, as I mentioned, is um, registered in India as a nonprofit. And uh, we are governed by a board of trustees. Here you see the trustees uh, who are Dr. Rishi Krishnan, who is the director of IIM Bangalore. Uh, he, uh, we have Smita Uttarwar, who's an entrepreneur from Mumbai, Mr. Veng Shukla, who's the first president of FFE, and Mr. Arun Kumar, who is the CEO and chairman of KPMG in India. We work very closely, the board of trustees in India works very closely with the board of FFE USA. Next slide, please. And what does FFE India Trust do? Um, almost all of you students, actually every one of you students would have uh, had a call, um, an email message, a communication of some kind from FFE India Trust in Bangalore. We do a lot of things and, and, and the most important being the administration of the scholarship program. The national program is administered from our office in Bangalore uh, through a team of uh, 29 individuals. A uh, very strong um, and dynamic team. Um, we administer the scholarship program and also the other programs, which is the skills training program, as well as the mentorship program. You'll hear more about that very shortly. We manage the large base of students, the student community. We have a growing alumni uh, community as well. And we have a large volunteer network. We raise funds from uh, donors, individuals, corporates, other foundations and trusts. Uh, we raise money from all over the world, uh, including our alumni. Uh, we conduct events such as this, and we do whatever we can to spread the word about the scholarship program all over the country. Today, we are supported by over 40 corporates, thousands of individuals. We have over 500 volunteers and now a large over a we'll soon have over a thousand uh, individuals volunteering as mentors. And we're also supported by 15 charitable trusts. Next slide, please. You all know for the eligibility for scholarships. Um, it includes merit and um, income. Uh, we have an income cutoff range. And we know that several of you are the first in your families to come to college and pursue your dreams. And we are so proud of each one of you uh, and what you mean to both the foundation and, and to your families and to your communities. Uh, next slide, please. Um, how do we do our work? Uh, we are very thankful to a large group of our volunteers who are all over the country. Uh, today, we have our volunteers, over 60 of them from Odisha and West Bengal who have joined the call. Uh, as you all know, students, uh, every one of you is connected to a volunteer who has met you, who has met your family, and has made sure that you qualify for the scholarship program. So to all of you uh, facilitators, I want to say we are deeply thankful for all that you do, for your selfless work, for your dedication, and for your commitment to the Foundation for Excellence for making our program 
robust and watertight. Thank you so much. Next slide, please. And where are we today? When you look at this graph, you can see that um, in 2010, we first established the office in Bangalore and we had awarded 1,146 scholarships. Last year, we were at close to 7,500 scholarships. Today, we are the largest scholarship granting organization in India in the higher education space with presence in uh, 27 states. So we're very proud of where we are today and we've made it because of the support we've received from all of you who are participating in the call today. Uh, and where are we today? We are at, uh, we've awarded over 71,000 scholarships um, to students uh, over this period of time um, and amounting to over today, over 230 crores. So very proud of where we are today. Um, I'd like to now uh, pass on this presentation to my colleague, uh, Mr. Ram Kolavenu. Uh, Ram uh, is uh, the COO of the Foundation for Excellence. He joined us in uh, November 2020, and Ram has played a very important role in streamlining operations, increasing efficiency and productivity of our teams. Uh, Ram is actually an engineer uh, uh, by profession, along with a management degree, and he has worked both uh, with over 22 years of experience, both in the corporate sector as well as the social enterprise space. We're very happy to have Ram with us today, and I'd like to pass on the presentation to Ram. He'll tell you a lot more about where we are going and the plans that FFE has. Thank you all for your attention. And over to you, Ram. Thank you, Sudha. Good evening, everyone. Uh, great to uh, get connected. And uh, I see close to 700 of you are there now. So glad to connect with you all. Um, it's been an almost a an year now, and uh, I can't. I mean, the journey has been very exciting. And in, in the previous slide, you've seen that we've got almost 7,500 students who got scholarships, and that steady growth in which we are actually increasing the number of deserving students getting scholarship has been very, very satisfying. Uh, go to the next slide, please. I would like to uh, congratulate the and welcome 301 new scholars who have got a scholarship in the last previous academic year for all the hard work you have done to land up in the best possible colleges. Um, so uh, the one thing which I may request you uh, as um, the volunteers, as well as the facilitators, volunteers, and the students is to start seeing that we have opened up our uh, in, uh, window for uh, the applications. Please spread the word so that more and more such people can get benefited out of that. My one ask, if I can, to, uh, to, the, uh, to our facilitators is to start seeing in, if we can get more uh, girl students apply for scholarships. Uh, based on the overall uh, country stand, uh, country average uh, in West Bengal and Odisha, we have less number of girls. I would really like to see this number go up in the coming year. Moving on, I think that I want to touch base on a few things. Um, uh, 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 one of the uh, one of the things. Um, just go to the next slide, please. So, I mean, uh, you can see uh, the spread of our uh, scholars across uh, twenty seven states. Uh, West Bengal and Odisha happen to be very, very critical for us. Uh, but I mean, if we get more number of girls, that will really take us into a different level as well. So uh, the couple of things which I want to touch base today, and uh, actually one of the things which differentiates us from um, our different scholarships which are available. The first one happens to be uh, the beyond scholarship. It is just not about the kind of uh, scholarships, which are financial scholarship, which you're getting. Uh, some of you who are in the second, third, final year and fifth year of uh, your studies have been going through different stages of this journey. What we've done um, in about six years back is what we have realized that there are certain gaps which exist from what is being expected from the industry and, and the kind of thing which we actually start learning from uh, in our college, as well as with the kind of a background which we are coming in, three fourths of us coming in from a rural background, to be able to bridge that gap uh, along with I am Bangalore, we've worked out a, uh, you know, a pro program which is a wraparound for your college, specifically for engineering and now for uh, B Pharma and law students as well. If you go to the next page. So the, what we have done is to actually bring in the differentiating factors. Uh, at the end of the first year, you, we are doing a baselining of 
uh, where you are from English, analytical, quantitative, and put you through various different programs. And as you progress in the third year, uh, get you exposed to different technical courses, which are not being taught across different streams. And uh, and also uh, um, in, the, in the third year, we are bringing in a mentoring program. Uh, and also as a fag end of the third year, getting you ready for uh, your, uh, your um, job interviews and so on and so forth. So I think what here, now we have two uh, cohorts of students who have actually gone through this journey and the results have been astonishing. Uh, the kind of a percentage of uh, placements which have, uh, as you graduate from your colleges has drastically gone up and the kind of a, uh, jobs which people are landing in uh, has dramatically improved as well. So I would request, urge all of you to take most of that. I know the third year students from engineering, law and uh, B Pharma, there are still few students who need to sign up for the mentoring program. Uh, please do so. So the mentoring happens to be another critical component. We started off in, again this one a couple of years back and this, um, this year a thousand of you are already signed up for uh, having uh, going through this mentoring program. Thousand senior people from industries, the best of the co corporates uh, with vast experience, spending one-on-one -on -one time with you is priceless. I would have loved to have anything close like this uh, when I was doing my uh, graduation. So please make most of it. They go, they take you through the real-world experience, and this is what gets you closer. So, and this has been very, very uh, fruitful both from uh, mentor and mentee uh, point point of view as well. Next slide, please. The other differentiating factor, and some of your alumni who have been here, and then we, uh, I think the uh, seed which has been sown in 2003, as I mentioned, on how uh, the circle of giving starts getting up, uh, as getting bigger and bigger. Today, uh, we have alumni spread across different parts of the world. Uh, they're contributing in many different ways. Some of you we have heard uh, during the uh, pre-session. Uh, so I, I would, uh, the, the, the differentiating factor which they are bringing and making the sustainability has been humongous. There Last year, even with pandemic, we go to the next slide. You've seen uh, uh, several of uh, close to the 13, 14, 50 of you coming forward and directly contributing, and also actually making the contributions through the corporates which you are working in. Today, I'm so glad that about 10 to 15 percent of our scholarships are being driven through our alumni. So, uh, thank you for uh, this kind of a contribution, and looking looking forward to many of you um, uh, joining the this journey. And this is at the end of the day. FFP is your organization to make it sustainable. This is how we want to get into. Awards and recognition keep continuing to us. We still we have received more and awards in the last, previous year. So keep doing the right things and these things follow. More. So we have added a uh, few more corporates last year and early into this year, we have seen a few more big names coming in there as well. So I'm so glad, thankful to the, some of the donors who are part of the uh, journey today. And you know, uh, I really uh, thank uh, both the corporates as well as uh, some of the foundations which are really doing a tremendous job in helping us to help you uh, in getting those scholarships. So I, with that, I, the, this is a team, I think some of you have interacted with few or many of those teams with this 30 vibrant people uh, have the people who are behind this journey in addition to the board. So with that, I really take a break here uh, and thank you. Enjoy the rest of the session and we'll connect at the end of the session with question and answers. Thank you, Sudha. Thank you, Ram. Uh, today, not only do we have our stakeholders from across India, but we also have a special message from FFE's founder, Dr. Prabhu Goyal, who's currently in the US, an IIT Kanpur alumnus and the recipient of President's Gold Medal for Academic Excellence. Dr. Goyal received a PhD in electrical engineering from Car Carnegie Mellon University. Dr. Prabhu and his wife, Mrs. Poonam Goyal, established the Foundation for Excellence in 1994. Dr. Goyal started his career with management and technical positions at IBM. And over time, he has served on the board of directors of many private and public companies. Let us now listen to Dr. Prabhu Goyal's message. Hello everyone, a especially warm welcome to our honored guests, our donors, our mentors, our facilitators. And a warm welcome to our FFE scholars and the FFE India team that has put this event together. 
I want to start by acknowledging the difficult last 12 months that all of you over there have gone through, the two waves of COVID and what it has done to the country and to all of us. In a small way, FFE has tried to help the FFE scholars and their families by raising emergency funds in both the first and the second wave though the losses that people have experienced are unimaginable. And I hope that India avoids a third wave and gets and is better prepared going forward. Coming back to the open house, I think I want to bring out the fact that the India team has done, a, the FFE India team has done a remarkable job in putting together training programs uh, mentoring, skilling, uh, etc., that has helped made a major difference in the employability of our scholars. In the year 19, 19, 2019 to 2020, over 90% of our scholars found jobs or went on for higher education. I think that's remarkable. Don't you think so? And this year, from 2020 to 2021, the employment rate is significantly better than what one would expect in this time frame, And I think we expect to do as well as the prior year. So thank you to the FFE India team. And I want to use this opportunity to remind the FFE scholars that they must take full advantage of all the programs that have been put together for them. The training, uh, the skilling programs, the mentoring programs, all the training that comes along with it uh, as far as interviewing uh, and various other uh, courses that we offer entrepreneurship, etc., to be able to maximize what they get out of the organization and employ it in their professional careers. I would also welcome our donors, facilitators, as well as mentors to please join these programs and make these programs even more successful. I think that would be very, very welcome. I want to also point out that the FFE scholars and alumni have done an incredible job in the last 12 months or the previous uh, 12 months, 1920, in raising funds from their corporates. And it's almost, the, it's almost they have doubled the amount of money that they raised in a single year from the year prior. I think that's a fantastic way to give back. And I encourage that and I applaud the FFE scholars for that. Going forward, I think it's very important for the FFE scholars to stay connected with FFE and to the alumni, to each other, because this is a network of over 10,000 people that, that has a lot of power in this network. When you work with each other, you can actually be thinking about taking advantage of this network for getting great advice, for finding new jobs, references, uh, uh, references to job openings that might be out there, uh, references to uh, career counseling, uh, new opportunities that you might be looking for, because this is how the network works. People in the network are very valuable because there's no other way you can get this kind of information and advice. So I would strongly encourage you to stay connected with the alumni network and leverage it and give into it as well. Again, I would like to end by saying, I hope you all have a wonderful open house today. And I thank all our guests for being here to make this event successful. Oh, and I hope our FFE scholars go back and say it was very worthwhile. Thank you. A wonderful and inspiring message from FFE's founder, Dr. Prabhu Goel. I request the participants to please use the Q&A box to post any questions that you may have. We'll have a Q&A session at the end of the event. Also, also an appeal to all the scholars and alumni to stay connected to FFE through our social media presence on Facebook and LinkedIn. The links are being posted in the chat box. Request you all to please go ahead and join us by clicking the follow button button. Thank you so much. We are delighted to have with us today Dr. P.K. Banerjee,
President and Chief Technology Officer, Hintalgo Industries Limited, Mumbai, as a keynote speaker for the evening. Dr. P.K. Banerjee has more than 30 years of industrial experience in the areas of R&D, innovations, technology, business excellence, environment, and sustainability. Before joining Hindalco in 2014, he worked as Chief R&D and Scientific Services at Tata Steel. An IIT Kharagpur alumnus and member of various committees, Dr. Banerjee has more than 150 technical publications in various national and international journals, more than 25 patents, and guided many students for their MTech and PhD. Dr. Banerjee is recipient of many awards, like Excellence Award from Metal Asia, Metallurgist of the Year 2009 from Government of India, to name a few. Please join me in extending a warm welcome to Dr. Banerjee. Over to you, Dr. Banerjee. Yeah, good evening. Thank you. Thank you, uh, Taruna, uh, for those uh, kind words and very uh, warm kind of welcome. Now, uh, before I move forward, let me try to share my uh, presentations. Give me a minute. Uh, can you see my presentation? Yes, we can. Dr. Banerjee, we can see. Excellent. Uh, so thank you once again. Uh, you know, uh, just... Uh, uh, day before yesterday, I got a call, you know, that uh, this is a program being organized. Can you uh, share your thoughts with uh, students? So initially, I was a little bit of hesitant, but then, uh, you know, I was extremely excited that uh, these are the students, uh, and this is an opportunity uh, uh, to speak to students really comes. So why not? Uh, so uh, I just readily accepted. And today, I must say that I feel privileged. In fact, I feel uh, honored to be part of this program and share some of the thoughts. Uh, before I uh, go through this very short presentation, uh, uh, let me uh, wish that all of you are doing good, uh, you are safe, you are with good health, and of course, with very good spirit. I think uh, to me, uh, maintaining a good spirit is extremely important. We had tough time. Last one and a half year, we had very tough time. Uh, but the battle is not over, but uh, I must say that we have, we have almost uh, won that battle. We are stronger. We are much more stronger than what we were a year and a half back. We have learned a lot during this period. If you see, if you look back, uh, this COVID time has taught many things. We have seen the, the winners. We have seen the winners demonstrating certain qualities which we all can start practicing. What are those qualities? Who are the winners? The people who have demonstrated resilience, the people who have demonstrated innovations, the people who have demonstrated agility, collaborations, and of course, on the top of that, the positiveness, they are the winners. And these are very, very fundamental to all of us. We can keep building our career, our activities on those fundamentals. And if you keep doing that, we'll also be the winners. And keeping that in mind, keeping that learnings you know, over this uh, last 18 months, I thought that why not talk on the topic, the digital mindset, which also needs those qualities. So keeping that background, I was just thinking that digital mindset, a key to the digital transformations the topic is very, very relevant to the students, the engineering students, the medical medicine students, or even the students from the law and other areas. This is relevant to all of us. Because when we look back, when, when we look back to the world, see the changes, what is happening. The whole physical world is now shifting towards a digital world. And these shifts are happening very fast, very rapid. See the examples, I'll, I'll, I'll say a few examples. Just see what has happened. March 2020 versus today, the classroom has shifted to a virtual classroom. 
but the entire excitement is, has not been lost. It's there. Students are learning, enjoying, having fun. The whole things have only shifted from one form to another. Another case, it's a very typical case in industries, you know, the storeroom management. You just see managing items in a storeroom. We used to have a supervisor, a manager, and a worker. But today, the whole thing is managed by a robot. It is controlled from distance, and the whole thing is managed very efficiently by a robot. See on the top, the whole social media, the friendship, the way we used to have our friendship has shifted. When I was a student, we used to get a friend after a lot of effort called pen friendship. You know, we used to find our friends from country or outside country. And we had to wait two, three months to get a response. And today, you just get it in seconds. We chat, we learn from each other, we gossip with each other. The whole thing has shifted. See the examples of a courtroom. The whole dramatic and excitement which was happening inside a courtroom has now shifted to a virtual platform. So there are many such changes that are happening. Another example is the cash transfer. What is happening there? We don't need cash today. We just need to have few apps. We need a platform. We can go for digital transfer of money. We don't need cash. We just need to transfer cash through those payment gateways. The operation theaters, you know, for medical students, you see that the operation theaters is going to be dramatically changed over the years. Yes, we need specialized doctor and all, but there will be a lot of assistance you expect from the robots in coming years. Another very, very typical example, the whole concept of mobility that has shifted. We used to have a big queue to get a taxi. Now today, Uber, Ola, we just book it. It will be there. It will be there just in a few minutes at your doorstep. Not only that, it has even changed the whole concept of having a car. People are now interested to have the mobility, not a car. We want to have the mobility service. The Uber, Ola has changed the entire kind of concept. So with Airbnb, it's another uh, service provider. They are providing you the accommodations. They don't own any, any hotel, any accommodations. So with Uber Ola, don't own any car. So the whole concept has shifted. See at the bottom, we don't need to go to mall now for purchasing and all. What we can do, we can just do everything through e-commerce. And not only that, the entire supply is also now controlled by drone. See the changes, what is happening world over. So the question is why these disruptions? Why is this transformation is happening so rapidly? And this, this is because these disruptions are very, very good for the growth. These disruptions is creating happier and more satisfied customers. These disruptions are helping the workplace evolve and improve. The overall efficiency, effectiveness is improve the cost of making or producing something is coming down. So, so many advantages, so many benefits are coming out. Then why not? Why not embrace it? Why not go for it? And that's what exactly happening. If you don't embrace it, if you don't adopt those things, you will be the loser. You just see the example of Kodak. They are the leader in mainstream photography. We couldn't think anything beyond Kodak films. Just in few years, they went bankrupt. And that's because they didn't see the change happening around. The entire digital photography was coming so fast. They didn't see that change. And so they went bankrupt. Dr. Banerjee, I'm so sorry to interrupt, but just wanted to check, um, uh, are, you, are the slides moving? Because we can see just the first slide. Seems... Um... Uh, I, I can see the changes on my screen. Yes, but uh, it seems it's not visible on our screens. Okay, let me let me one second quickly uh, go to uh, this and uh, share once again. Yes, please. 
And if you can do the full screen, then maybe that would help. Yeah, I'll, I'll just I'll just see that. Uh, so you are not able to uh, see my screen yet. Well, we can see the screen, Dr. Banerjee, but it's not moving. The slides are not moving ahead further. We can just see the first slide. Just give me a minute. Uh, let me let me see because it was moving in my end. So I'll just uh, uh, reshare it. Uh, Yes, now we can see Dr. Energy. Okay, so I, there are some, somebody got stuck. So, so I just unshared and again shared. So what I was talking about, you know, those digital uh, disruptions, which was happening today, uh, the whole thing started long back. This major shift has happened recently, but if you see the industrial revolutions, they were creating a data analytics and technology ecosystem. And that ecosystem has led to uh, major changes. You see the industrial revolutions. It started with the steam power, then electric power, then electronics and computer, and today the connectivity, the entire internet of things or the networks has changed the world. So those are the changes happening in, in the industrial front. So the question is that you know, all these entire digitalizations, what are the what are the steps? How to go about it? How these things are happening? It's a journey, it's, it's a journey. It's not just one step or one, one kind of action. It is multiple actions, multiple steps. So it has three steps or the three phases. When somebody is going for this digital journey, it has to pass through three phases, digitization, digitalizations, and digital transformations. <laughs> the initial stage are the stage of digitization. The entire information and data is captured in digital form. That's the first step. You have to convert your information into digital form. But the second stage, digitalization is extremely, extremely important. What to do with that data? What data speaks? What insights you get from that data? What conclusion you are doing? What action to be taken? That's important. And that's done in the step two. And finally, we talk about the digital transformations where we talk about the entire business because in the entire business, it's not just one function. You have multiple functions. For example, in an industry, we have operations, but at the same time, we have supply chain. We have the procurement process. We have the marketing process. We have the HR process, logistics. There are so many functions. They are interconnected. So once you look from totality, the entire digital movement can be transforming the entire business because at a given time, on a real-time basis, they see how the functions are speaking to each other, sharing knowledge, and trying to help the overall business to gain the performance. So that's, that's what is the ultimate target. So digital transformation is extremely important. And to achieve that, what is necessary, and I was talking in my title of the presentations, which what I was talking about is the mindset you have to have a digital mindset. Digital mindset is not just that you know certain tools or techniques. It's not that I know Python programming or you know, I'm very good at Facebook or Instagram or certain tools, statistical uh, tools I, I'm, I master. Those are basic, the basic necessity, but that's not sufficient. You have to appreciate that you are in a different journey. You are, you are in a journey of transforming something big. So you need, to, you need to be ready to accept those changes. You have to go for experimentations. You have to come up with new ideas. You have to collaborate with your friends. You have to learn from each other. So there are many things you have to do. It's no longer a one-man kind of job. It is a team's effort, and you have to prepare for that. And that's that's when you can achieve the digital transformations. And during this digital journey, you have to keep focus on four key areas. Of course, you have to focus on smart, safe, and sustainable workplace. You need very efficient supply chain because in any process, you have inputs, you have outputs, you have process intermediate products. 
So entire value chain has to be looked into. In aluminum, we, we, we start from the mines, we get raw materials, and at the end, we make aluminum product, which can go for multiple applications, including making a car. So the entire value chain, we have to see how the digital support system can help. Of course, the third one is a digital savvy workforce. It's extremely important, which I was talking, and my entire uh, uh, talk today is focusing on that. We need a workforce. Not only they understand the digital technologies, the tools and tackles, but also they have the right kind of mindset. That is extremely important. And of course, the most important is delighted customers. So you need to see you have understood customer requirement. You have understood what you are delivering to them, the quality of service of the product you are delivering. And of course, their feedback, what they expect, how you can delight them. That is the major focus areas of the entire and one of the enablers has happened over these years, I was talking about the computing technologies has evolved very, very significantly. Looking back in the 70s, there was mainframes. There was only a big room, big computer, and everybody will be going there to get things done. Things got changed in the 90s. Then came the personal computer. You have the local uh, server, on-premise, all the facilities. Then 2010, suddenly it went to the cloud. That means external uh, server somewhere at a distance, you send your data to an external uh, cloud and all the computation is done there and the results come back to you. But then further things happened recently. Why not? Why to send so much of data, huge volume of data to a computer, uh, to the cloud? Why not the reverse way? The computer goes to the source of the data and compute and do some analysis. That's the age computing is happening today. So you can see the evolution is taking place, which is making this digital transformations so rapid and so fast. And there are basically five enablers. And if you see, the entire digital journey starts from the top management, the leadership. The leadership has to be convinced. They need to start the ball rolling. And once they start, and once they identify the second enabler is what are the focus areas? What needs to be delivered? Who are your partner? And then, of course, the key or the center is the people. Other people are aligned. Have they understood the need? Have they got the right kind of skill? So all those has to be addressed. And then the fourth enabler must be the, the, the projects. When you get into the entire digital movement, it has to be distributed in multiple projects and make a system how you can review, how you can execute all the projects. And of course, the fifth enabler, as I said already, you need to have a very strong IP, IT infrastructure, that's tools and the technologies. And of course, the entire thing develop in layers. If you see the foundation, the foundation layer is basically what I was talking about, the IP, IT infrastructure, the digitally savvy workforce, the standard operating practices, the SOPs of your operations, these are the foundations. This layer is the first thing you have to achieve. And once you have, you can focus on data acquisitions. Once you have the system, you start capturing data. You, you need a ERP, you need sensors, you need historian. Even you can have, uh, have to get some data from external sources. So data acquisition is the second, and then the next layer of activities will be doing the reports and data visualizations. You have data, but you know if the data is too big and too voluminous, then that may not be very useful. You have to segregate. You have to say that which data for what purpose. For different layers, different level of people needs different kind of uh, data. Different applications need different kind of data. So data segregation is extremely, extremely important. And then comes the analysis of data. You have to start with simple and routine decision support system and finally go for the advanced analytics. You know, that's the level of activities or maturity will happen once you are into the digital journey. So with that, let me quickly spend a couple of minutes um, sharing some of the uh, practices, some of the things which is happening in the industries. As I said, digital journey is a journey. It's not that in few months or few days or you will achieve it. But at the same time, you have to start with that big vision, with that small, small deliverables, and start getting it. We at Hendalco started this some time back, 
And there are a few case studies I'll quickly show you how this digital transformation is happening. For example, you know, this is a good, a very good example. Septi, septi is extremely important for all of us. Whether we are engineers or we are doctors or lawyers, you know, wherever we work or we stay, just stay in our home, in the societies, in the accommodations, wherever we have, everywhere, the safety is extremely important. And of course, the soft floor in the industries are extremely hazardous. There are so many things are happening on the soft floor. Uh, the, the machines running, the vehicles are moving, the products or the raw materials are going from one end to other end. There are many people are working there. There could be a lot of emissions, gases, and other pollutions happening on the soft floor. So, so you have to be extra cautious. Now, how to control, how to see that the safety and the environment is maintained to the best level? Now, this is one example of making an AI-based computer vision platform. So what it does, you have the CCTV cameras which captures real-time the data or images. And the images are analyzed on the spot itself. I was talking some time back about the age computing. Why not computer go to the source of the data? And this is a typical example of that. At the source itself, the IoT, the Internet of Things, which is capturing data, they do also some kind of analysis. And from that analysis, they find, for example, in this case, what is the objective? Ob objective is to find the violations. If anybody is violating certain norms. In a, in a soft floor, you need certain PPEs personal protection equipments like helmets or, uh, or safety shoes, goggles, hand gloves, or even COVID protocols you have to follow with mask, et cetera. Then the quality, quality you have to maintain. Vehicle movement has to be restricted. So all those things can be observed from those uh, uh, image analysis. And then it will trigger, if there is a violation, it will trigger some message going to uh, either through uh, WhatsApp messages or by audio, you know, it can, and go for voice and people will be alerted there is something going wrong and this is implemented and it's really giving a lot of benefit improving the safety performance another interesting example of connectivity i was talking again Manager, i'm sorry to interrupt you this is ram here i know the paucity of time is it uh, i mean this is fantastic information and very very useful is there a way this can be shared we can actually uh, you know share it with our uh, students as well offline so that they can get benefit out of that i'm unfortunately uh, because of the paucity of time we may need to wrap this one up uh, yeah yeah sure. yes 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 i can share this i'll definitely uh, that's no issue in sharing that I'll, I'll share later on and uh, I'll come to your conclusions because I have more or less uh, given examples and this is I just last uh, example see connectivity I was talking about you have to connect and you have to collaborate you have to share knowledge and this is a very interesting example that you have the multiple plans they got connected in a in a platform where they're sharing knowledge and helping each other and uh, of course, there are a few examples I'll skip. And finally, I let me let me go to the last slide, and which is important for all of you. And when we talk about a digital mindset, I think these points are extremely important to understand. First of all, is the digitization, digitalization, and digital transformation. These three you must be very fully familiar with. And these are the steps one has to follow. And then I also mentioned about the small thing, you know, you start with small, small achievement. Don't wait uh, that the big thing happened. Big thing will definitely happen, but you have to start with small. And continuously you will getting the results and you will have the confidence of your people. Then of course, the data is extremely important. Have the authenticity of the data, have the data ready for uses. Of course, you get ready for the reality. You know, you know there is some surprise you'll get on the real-time data. Are you prepared for that? That's extremely important for us. And then the most important is the partnership. I talk about uh, collaborations, partnership, and this is extremely important. And especially the partnership between the domain expert and the data scientists. You know, they have to work hand in hand. They have to collaborate with each other. And of course, the reskill, which is extremely important. I have already mentioned about that. This is the heart of the whole uh, digital journey. And of course, you have to improve your IT policies, IT facilities, and keep checking whether the data maturity is there. It's not that one time data is done. So every year you have to check whether you need to have more data and all. I think with that, you know, if we have those things and the key learnings we had, so with that, we can definitely go for this digital transformation, whether it's industry or any other application in our day-to-day -day life, this is extremely important and 
we need to have this kind of digital mindset. And this is extremely critical today for all of you. So thank you once again for this opportunity. Thank you so much, Dr. Banerjee. Thanks a lot. Um, um, thank you, Dr. Banerjee, for this motivating and inspiring message and for your time to be with us this evening. ABU, a World of Opportunity Foundation, has been supporting FFE since 2015 through the scholarship program, benefiting over 1,200 scholars. And we are extremely grateful for this. We definitely hope this partnership grows and strengthens in future. Thank you once again. Thank you very much. FFE has been extremely fortunate to be backed by a team of highly uh, motivated and dedicated facilitators who have been helping FFE through their tireless efforts and voluntary services. Today, we have with us two video messages from our facilitators Dr. Lakshman Ghosh from West Bengal and Dr. Saroj Kumar from Orisha. Uh, can we have the videos, please? Namaskar. I am Dr. Lakshman Ghosh from Kolkata, West Bengal. I am a facilitator of FEP. I was nominated by Mr. Jagat Banerjee, who is now USA. Ten years ago, I verified two students, but happy to share you, nowadays it has reached 100 students. Many students who are coming from very poor family, they have merit, but they have no money. So financial assistance is very important to them. FEP giving the scholarship, they can fulfill their dream, they can continue their higher studies. I want to thank the donor and the officials of FEP. When I request the information, the officials of Bangalore promptly give the information to me and I can verify the students. BTEC, LLB, BFAR and MBBS students are getting the scholars fee from FEP. And I feel the role of FEP is like worship of God. In the lockdown situation, the parents of students who are now in very low income, they also got the financial assistance from FEP. So I am very grateful to FEP. Thanks. Uh, Professor Saroj Kumar Patel, currently professor in mechanical engineering, NIT Raurkela. I have been associated uh, with FFE for last 20 years and doing my uh, country, giving my contribution as a facilitator. I have seen because of this FFE, many of our students are able to complete their uh, engineering educations with the help from FFE. And I really appreciate the, uh, the style of working of FFE that Unlike in other scholarship, it is purely based on the based on the certificates, income certificate, what they produce and other certificate. But here, the here the as a facilitator, we visit their houses, we interact with their parents, and uh, uh, I uh, really uh, enjoy and uh, thank FAP and for all their support. The fees and all of engineering education technician has gone so high that it will be really difficult continue the uh, study. Of course, these days bank loans are uh, available, but earlier there were no, it is simply impossible to get the bank loan. And at that time, FAP was the only, uh, the real helpful. These days, of course, bank loans are somehow available and all, but still 
FAP is really doing a wonderful job and I wish that it should continue and I am ready to contribute as long as I can for the uh, FAP. Thank you very much. <coughs>
from the state of West Bengal. And they are Anand, Anand Kumar Gorai, Nirmalendu Chakrabarti, Manik De, Anjan Kumar Pati, Anand Moy Manna, Asim Sinhare. Thank you all for doing a wonderful and committed job to the Foundation for Excellence. We will continue to seek your support this year and in the, and in the coming years. Thank you again. Once again, a big thank you to each one of you for making a difference in the world of our scholars through your selfless service, dedication, and commitment. Today, we also have with us several dignitaries from various colleges. Thank you very much for joining us this evening and being part of this event. Participants, a gentle reminder to please continue posting your questions in the Q&A box. Coming up next, we have engineering scholar Shubhanka Das, medical scholar Noorin Alam, and BFARM scholar Debashish Tudu sharing the experience as an FAP scholar. Can we have the videos, please? Hello, everyone. Good evening. I am Noorin Alam, a second prof MBBS student in IPGMA and SSKM Hospital. I am from Purva Bordhuman, West Bengal. My father is into agriculture and my mother is a housewife. I scored 90% in both my board exams. I cracked NEET 2019 with an All India rank 11,867. I want to become a radiologist in future. I was introduced to FFE by one of my friends who herself is an FFE scholar. My facilitator Laxman Ghosar helped me a lot in this regard. After getting admitted into my college, I was worried about the expenses of medical studies and how much pressure it was going to create. FFV not only has provided that economic assistance, but has built a responsibility in me to serve back the society. FFV also conducts webinars where we get chances to explore various topics of medical field as there are experienced doctors delivering them. I would like to take this opportunity to thank Team FFV and my donors, Sandeep Sen Sir and Saverika Sen Ma'am. I would also like to thank my facilitator, Laxman Ghosh Sir, Thank you once again, Team FFV. Hello everyone. I am Subhakandas from Odisha. I am currently studying in the third year of Mechanical Engineering at NID Raulkila, Odisha. I have a six-membered family that includes my grandfather, my parents and my two sisters. My father is a farmer and my mother is a housewife. I have secured 94.6% in my 10th and 86.5% in my 12th. My current CGP is 9.19. Besides that, I am a member of a technical club named ASME in my college and my hobbies include watching and playing cricket. I came to know about FAP from one of my college seniors. Fortunately, I got selected by FAP. After my selection in FAP, they not only helped me financially to pay my college fees but also guided me to improve my skills through various webinars, skill development programs like Nguru English, AMCAT, and FACE preparation. So I would like to take this opportunity to thank Team FAP and my donor AWOO Foundation and my facilitator Ajay Patnek sir. So one day I would like to come back as a donor and contribute to Team FAP to help other students in their study when I am settled in my life. Thank you. Hello everyone, hope you all are doing well. I am Dhrasa Shkudu, third year Vipharm student from Jadhapur University, Kolkata. I am from a rural village in Bakura district of West Bengal. My father is a farmer and my mother is also engaged in agriculture. After my 10 plus 2, my family was getting, getting it difficult to fund me in my studies and to fulfill my ambition of becoming a medical inspector. At the college, I got to know about FEP from a senior and it has helped me a lot. FEP has lightened my financial burden. Apart from scholarship, FAP also provides skill development and training program like English communication in Nguru application. For this all, I would like to thank my donor, Mr. Chirak Patel sir and Mr. Kanu Patel sir, my facilitator, Mr. Laxman Ghosh sir and the whole FAP team for such valuable assistance. In the future, I would wish to contribute to FAP. Thank you. Thank you, dear scholars. We are proud of you all and wish you the very best for your future. The event will not be complete without recognizing our alumni 
whose time and support in all forms is deeply valued. We are thankful to all FFE alumni who are joining us today. We take this opportunity to celebrate and recognize our alumni champions of 2021 who have committed to support the organization in different ways, be it through individual donations or helping us establish partnership with other donors, helping us raise funds worldwide or being our star mentors and facilitators. Please cheer for all our alumni champions who are up on your screen now. A big thank you to all our alumni champions for your commendable efforts. Moving on the last agenda, we have wonderful video messages from our alumni, Dr. Mr. Vishwanath Bhaduri, Dr. P. Sai Shraddha Patro, and Mr. Prasanjit Khatua. Let us now listen to what they have to say. Hello, how are you all? Greetings to everyone. I hope all are keeping safe themselves in this current scenario. Myself, Vishwanath Bhaduri. I completed my Bachelor of Technology from Jalpaiguri Government Engineering College in Electronics and Communication Engineering stream from 2013 to 2017. During this 10 year of my undergraduate course, I was an FFE scholar. As I lost my father at very early stage of my life and belonging to a rural place in West Bengal, even though I completed my secondary and higher secondary education with underlying support from my school teachers, but it was very difficult for me to continue higher studies, that too in the engineering field. Hence, this scholarship from FFE immensely supported me to pursue my dream of becoming an engineer not only by the scholarship amount, but the mentorship programs from FAP also helped me as guidance in various stages. After finishing my bachelor's, currently I am working as an R&D engineer in Synopsys, which is an US MNC and renowned as world leader in automation and intellectual property maker. Along with FAP and many others, I also believe in circle of giving. So currently, I am also contributing to this noble cause by every means possible as alumni or as facilitator. My message is to the student, study well and be proud of being part of FAP. To the recent alumni, please do your part to make FAP a grand success year on year. To my donor and all members of FAP scholarship teams, thanks for continuous support. Good afternoon everyone, I am Dr. P. Saishadha Patro. I am currently working at Ames Bhuneshwar, Odisha and I came to know about Foundation of Excellence when I was studying my plus 2 science in Khaligod College and I was aspiring to be a doctor but I was finding it hard to pay for the tuition fees and all for coaching classes so I then was looking for a scholarship which and was guided by uh, Mr. Suresh sir uh, who was a mentor and uh, I came to know about this foundation and got a help really at that crucial point of time and I have seen many such uh, scholars who were from poor background getting help from this foundation and I continued to get the help during my MBBS course also and I had already kept in mind that I will help the foundation or help scholars uh, uh, again when I am financially stable and I am, I am married to a doctor and uh, my fam I am doing a job and my family is supporting and uh, I am financially stable now, so I am again from two years I am already contributing to the foundation because I know many uh, such needful people are there who, who are good students and want to uh, achieve something in life and uh, this foundation really helps. So I uh, urge everyone who was a 
uh, alumni of this foundation to contribute to the cause and uh, keep the cycle going. Thank you. Hello everyone. I am Prasannajit Khatwa from Odisha. I passed out B.Tech in Electrical Engineering uh, from IGIT Sarang in 2012. After that, I joined Larson and T. Group and I served there for 8 years. Uh, since last year, I am working for Indian Railways at Calcutta. During my B.Tech course, FFE has helped me immensely because at that time our financial condition was not in that condition so that I can pursue my engineering. So at that time it has helped me a lot and I strongly believe that uh, if someone has helped you in your need time then we must help it back. So for this I continue to help other students by FAP and I request you all to help our fellow students so that they can fulfill their aspirations in life. Thank you FAP. Thank you all. Thank you dear alumni. We truly appreciate the fact that you've stayed connected to FAP. Participants, a gentle reminder to please continue posting your questions in the Q&A box. It is indeed heartening to see over 650 participants have joined us today, and they, this makes us both feel proud and humbled. And with this, we have come to the end of today's event. On behalf of the board, management, and team at FFE, I would like to thank each one of you for being with us today. The event was made possible only because of your support. Thank you, Dr. P.K. Banerjee, for sharing your inspirational message with our scholars. Our sincere thanks to Mr. Sunanta Mohanty from Linde Global Support Services, Ms. Lata Gopalakrishnan, Mr. Pavan Kumar Marela, and Ms. Nupur Joshi, Ms. Suhina Rao, and Ms. Vaishnavi Govindan, Govindan from AWU Foundation for joining us today. We truly appreciate the time spent with us this evening. I would also like to thank our respected dignitaries representing various colleges and feeder partners for your time and support towards FFE. Thank you, Dr. Lakshman Ghosh and Dr. Saroj Kumar, FFE alumni, Mr. Biswanath Bhaduria, Mr. Patro, and Mr. Prasanjit Khatua, FFE scholar Nuran Alam, Shubhangta Das, and Debushish Tudu for sending us your wonderful messages. Thank you, respected facilitators and mentors, for your valuable time. A special thanks to all the students and alumni present here. And last but not the least, thanks to FFE's management. For, for their continuous support and to FFE team for organizing this wonderful event. Thank you all once again. <laughs>